Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. This is Dao Diyub, and I am with my beloved brother, the great man of God, uh, all the way from United States. Uh, he's with us, and um, let's do it. Let's do it. Amen. This is a day, and this is the time the Lord has made, and we rejoice and be glad on this, for this is a day, and this is a time the Lord has made. Welcome, men of God. Welcome, welcome. And um, good to good to have you on a broadcast. Good to have you on a uh, interview time and uh, prayer time. And um, the people are watching us. Make sure you drop your prayer questions. If you have a prayer question, uh, start uh, dropping it right now. And we're gonna pray for you. And uh, if you have any question, make sure you drop it uh, also. And uh, best is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, uh, how are you, man of God? Amen. I I am great. Uh... I'm very honored to be here on you with it uh, out and uh I just I'm excited to to be able to get into this with you and and, and share I know that we've uh tried to align our schedules a couple of times and, and it didn't work uh glad that the uh video and audio is working <laughs> yes I, so, uh, nice. well, so we have a man of God Brendan with us and uh, we are so happy uh, so happy we made it uh today and uh, this man has a great anointing great great calling of god on his life and uh, we're gonna learn something amazing um and just before we be continue let's have a prayer uh opening prayer father we thank you so much for this time for this moment lord and father use your man uh, amazingly and the people uh for the need of the people lord uh, father you be his mouth in the name of jesus christ and father we thank you for this broadcast father we thank you for your for your grace for your mercy for your holy ghost fire on this in the mighty name of jesus christ father we thank you in the name of jesus in the strongest son of god amen 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 amen, amen man amen. of god so i have a first question uh that i would love to ask you uh yes, sir. your encounter with jesus how yes, did sir. you get to know jesus christ amen well uh the uh first part of it uh, we, I grew up in the, uh, the Catholic church. My mom, um, was, um, such a great woman of God in, uh, in, in and out of church whenever, um, we, we, we'd start to pray or read the Bible or everything. She always made it, uh, fun and she always made it accessible. So I wanted to learn more about God and, uh, pressing in and, and different things like that was, uh, not something that anybody was really, uh, able to teach me. Um, one day when I was at church, I was bowing down, I'm, I'm, I'm bowing my head and I'm praying and it felt like I, I just lifted up in the air and, uh, I turned into like a ball of light, <laughs> you know? Uh, and after that, I, I was like, okay, I want that. I want to feel this. I don't know what this is, but I want to feel this. And it brought me on a journey. So I was about eight years old when that happened. Um, when, by the time I was about 12, 13, I was searching everywhere I could to try to feel that again, or to try to know that, uh, that, that ball of light feeling again. And, um, when I, when I got brought to, um, the Catholic church, they, they showed me how to pray the rosary beads. And I was, I was doing that. I was going to meetings for that. And I was reading the Bible, but, uh, wasn't necessarily that, that same feeling, that same power uh, or anointing or, or yeah. Uh, relationship feeling that I was having uh, wasn't until I um, started going to the assemblies of God. Um, uh, when I when I got to that point, the the people there uh, opened up to me and showed me different things and taught me about uh, adult baptism because I you know I was baptized as a child in the Catholic mm. Church. So um, when when I did that, I that was the uh, February third of uh, twenty. Uh, excuse me um of uh 1996 1996 wow. um and right then um I, I just felt so different after i got baptized you know and uh it was in god it was and he isolated me because you know my mom was such a good um friend and backer and everything always praying with and for me and different things like that but she wasn't even there for my baptism, you know, and then my, my wife wasn't there for my baptism, you know, n none of my friends, family, nobody. So it was like, God was like, okay, if you want to follow me, you're going to follow me. You know, you're not going to follow me because your friends are, your family are, or anybody else. 
And uh, so at that point, that's when I truthfully accepted Jesus as Savior. Um, I, I Within the next year, I started um, becoming a minister um, and then um, helping out at Sunday schools, helping out at, um, at churches, parking cars, uh, working in the library, cleaning bathrooms. I mean, I was doing everything and anything that I could. I, I just wanted to be part of the church, be part of the kingdom. And um, everybody that was willing to teach me anything, I, I went towards them. You know, um, I had a gentleman who was um, doing a Bible study at his home and he started teaching me how to memorize the Bible. Um, that was when I was living in Rhode Island. Um, but after I, I was married for about a year, this was around 1999, um, uh, I moved down to Texas um, and when I came down here, it was different than Rhode Island. There was a lot more freedom um, mm -hmm. for worship or, or different things like that. Like they actually had praise and worship music in the um, uh, supermarkets and stuff. So wow. that was when it really started opening up for me more. But I actually started hearing more from God because uh, uh, wow. he called me on a fast. So he calls me on an 11 day fast. And I am not a small guy, so <laughs> I like looked the other way and I said, uh, Jesus, I think that was for him. You know, uh -huh. and I didn't believe that, <laughs> that was for me. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going on 11 day fast. Well, uh -huh. uh, he says it again to me within seconds. He says, no, you're going to go on 11 day fast. And I was like, uh, maybe you're talking to that guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I, I kept trying to deflect it. And the third time he said it to me, I said, yes, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on the 11 day fast. Okay. I don't, I didn't even know what that meant. So I was like, okay, so what's the, he's like, and he jumped me right into the, to the legitimate one, you know, uh, no food, only water. And uh, we're living down here in Texas and the heat in the shade is like 104. Okay. So it's like wow. it's hot and I'm drinking only water, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at work and I'm doing like, work I'm, I'm shoveling ditches and you know uh cutting grass and doing all this thing out in the heat like i said and all the people around me were like oh you gotta eat you gotta do this you gotta i said no god told me not to so wow. uh on the ninth day of the 11 day fast god said to me do you want to eat and i was like yes <laughs> as soon as he asked me and uh he said okay what i want you to do is i want you to read the book of matthew so i was like okay and uh, normally the book of Matthew would have took me about two and a half to three months to read. And um, I read it in not even an hour, you know, and wow. um, and I could comprehend it to the point where my father-in-law, who was a minister, was uh, grilling me on what I just read. And I was answering the questions better than he could ask them. And he was just like, wow, you really uh, read it. You know, you really understand it. And I was oh, like, yes, sir. And, you know, and all this stuff. So, I mean, after that, you know, I started reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you know, all this stuff. I said, the more I could read, the more I could eat. But God was trying to show me, you know, mm. you, you're trying to worry about your stomach. You were making God. He says, however, I'm going to make me God. He says, you know, I am the living word. I, you know, you're going to eat my word. And once I started doing that, the kingdom of God really started moving in wow. and out of me and uh, people we're just like amazed, like I said, 20, 21, 22, 23, a young kid. And I knew more than most of the people that were, you know, 50, 60 years old. But again, going back to the beginning where my mom, when the first thing she had me pray for uh, mm -hmm. as a young child was uh, wisdom and knowledge. And it wasn't just to have wisdom and knowledge, but wisdom and knowledge to teach God's people. So ever since I was, uh, like I said, eight nine years old, when that ball of light came, my mom had me pray in that and really seek it after God for his wisdom and knowledge to teach God's people. So that, wow. that's really what been my war work and where I believe that, uh, where he changed my life. Yes, I sir. think that's a very, very wonderful thing that you brought up, wisdom and knowledge. And yes. uh, when you're newly Christian, you know, uh, yes, it's a very important thing to understand <clears throat> as a believer. That right. knowledge and understanding of the word of God is very important, you know, and um, I, I think your mother taught you very well. And I think that's <laughs> that's where you increase, you know, once you once you begin to have, you know, I think if you become greedy for for something, right, you know, right. and, and you lost a lot of things, become greedy for something. 
But yes, if sir. you have not been greedy, if you have been encourage yourself for knowledge and understanding and wisdom of the God, tell me, let me say that everything comes to you. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added upon to you. So now I have another question. I love, I love the testimony, you know, sir, people are dropping down powerful testimony, you know, and it's, it's an amazing. So when you didn't find like nobody came to your water baptism, right? So right. nobody came to you, but they, people might be watching. They are only Christian in their house. So they're only believer maybe in their house or they are only. Um, yes. What do you say to those people? Like they Listen, feel like this is not God has want them to do it. So what do you want to say to those people? Uh, Jesus promises us that we are not going to be popular because of this. He promises us that the, he says, the one thing that I'm going to promise you is that there will be tribulation. He says, there was tribulation for me. There's going to be tribulation for you. So uh, he is our example in all things. So if he went through it, we're going to go through it. But he says, rejoice, for I have overcome the world. Even though you go through trials and tribulations, know that I am with you. Know that I am for you and know that you will overcome because I have already overcome the world. Amen. 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 That's such a powerful thing that uh, God has overcome the world and you will overcome the world. Amen. So stay mm -hmm. focused. Um, so do you, uh, do you ever, uh, as a minister of God and as a, as a believer, let's talk like a believer, as a believer, uh, do you ever feel like things are not working for you and you feel like, um, where is God now? Because I believe there right. are millions of people, millions of people, uh, they, I get, I get the question answers. Um, I get a lot of, uh, uh, people who goes through a lot of things and they say like, um, I've been a believer for 10 years. God did nothing for me. And like, what do you want him to do when he has given you five senses and plus he has given you the breath of life, which you cannot get it in anywhere on the world. Like right. common sense. What do you, so what do you want to say to those people? Did you ever also felt uh, that you were uh, left alone and you didn't had a, uh, a God, where is God? You question it. So would you like to have those people from your experience if ever you had it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's definitely been uh almost every person's walk that I've ever heard. Yeah. They they uh you 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 have the ups and downs, you have the the backsliding, whatever it is. Um the problem is most of the time, whenever we give something to Jesus, we're giving it to him like this. We're we're holding on to it still, right? Okay. So uh we, we we're not truthfully giving it to him. So we, when, when we hand it to Jesus, we're like, okay, take my, take this pain away from me, take this past away from me, and Jesus is like, I'm trying, and like we just pull it back in. So uh, the the wow. things that happened to me, uh, where it really pulled me away, was everything from uh, pornography to um, lying, cheating, stealing, all these different things. Uh, was was my my young young child age, like uh, early teens. And then the pornography stuck with me. And uh, I had other things now coming in, like uh, sports all the time and video games and uh, movies and all these different things was taking the time of the Lord away. Mm. So, uh, And nowadays you know, there's TikTok. Yeah, there you go. TikTok, <laughs> Instagram, all these different things. And that's what people sit there and they, they fill their life with it. Even Facebook, you know, you sit there and you just scroll and scroll and scroll and, and doing all these things. Where's your time of prayer? Where's your time yeah. of fasting? Where's your time of, of getting along with God um, and, and, and giving? You know, I believe that the three braid cord that is not easily broken is prayer, fasting, and giving because Jesus says when you pray, when you give, and when you fast. So he doesn't say if. He doesn't say you might be able to. He says when you do this, do it this way. When you do this, do it this way. So he gave us the steps to get into his presence, and Jesus himself you know was our example in all things he kept getting away to talk to his father he kept taking time by himself and whenever you do that you find yourself strengthened so when i wasn't doing that um yeah the time and time again we, I, I i went out and um i got a notebook they wanted mm -hmm. us to invite people to our church well mm -hmm. i i fit, everybody was coming in with one page on the notebook they, they were coming in with it, with it partially filled or halfway filled. Now, look, look, I got 15 names of people I invited. I came with a notebook that was almost half full. I had like hundreds of names, right? But wow. the problem was 
is I was inviting them to come see my fun pastor. I was inviting them to come listen to my good worship team. Or I was inviting them. I was never inviting them to come meet Jesus. I was never invited. So all those phone numbers in every single one of those hundreds of numbers was all fake numbers. People were lying to me. And again, it was because I was giving them emptiness that they were re replying to that emptiness with more emptiness. And wow. um, when I started realizing I was I was doing it that way, mm. um, it, it, it chipped something off of me that, that I had that I didn't realize that I had to get rid of. So then the next thing, when it, when it happened again, we started a ministry called uh, Saturday Soul Winning Society. And what we would mm. go out, we would help people uh, fix their houses up, or we'd help them like rake their yard. We would we'd come over there for free, and we got to invite them to our church. Well, it wow. was helping. It was helping to get more souls into the kingdom. It was mm. helping to get people that once came and stopped coming to start coming back. But wow. the problem was is that the people that were uh, in it with me, helping. They started having, uh, I didn't know about demonic attacks at the time. So, so like their, um, their, their houses were getting broken into. A fire started inside of one person's house. Another person got their truck stolen. And another person had tools stolen off their truck, like, like thousands of dollars worth of tools. So, I mean, we were getting attacks left and right. And instead of knowing, you know, about the full armor of God and about uh, praying and, and really getting into uh, warfare about this, I retreated, you know, and and uh, and I was just like, oh man, and um, I had a lot of harsh attacks from Christians, you know, as well, like discouraging me. That the one thing that a lot of Christians don't like is when somebody's on fire, they want to uh, throw water onto you and put you out, you know, because yeah. because they themselves aren't on fire, so they'll be like, oh, you know, you're not going to be on fire for long, and they want to put you out, and it's like, no, wait a minute, that's not the way we're supposed to be. We're mm. supposed to, so the, the, the greatest tool of all of this is what? Surround you with other men and women of God. You need to find yourself somebody that can be your mentor because that's what the God, uh, God wants for us. He says, go out into all the world and make friends. No. Go out into all the world and make people who are robots to follow you into church. No. He says, go out into all the world and make disciples. So the only way that we can make disciples is if we're discipling someone. So you need somebody that's discipling you, you know. And yeah. I, and when I started really getting into that purpose of it, he really started growing me forth a lot more. And uh, that that really, you know, the the pornography broke off of me. The video games, I took them all off my phone. All the little silly games that we play, all the Instagram and all these different things, I I took them off my phone, and yeah. I had time for God. You know, and I stopped making excuses and, and started, uh, you know, getting into his kingdom more. And, and every wow. place that I knew that I was lacking in, instead of running from it, I ran towards it. You know, I, like I, I don't know what uh, spiritual warfare is. Well, I'm running into it. I'm going to find yeah. out what, how I do it, you know. And, wow. and I would ask the people, the men, the men and women of God that I knew that was in this already. And I'd ask them, you know, how do you do this? What does this mean? I don't understand, you know. And then also, of course, you read the Bible, and you, you bring bring forth your Bible, your Word, and this is where you're going to get all all of His answers from. You know, Amen. He's going to give you it inside and out, and teach you, you know, sixty six books of instructions. So He wants to give them to you and, and show them to you, and then you start living it. And that's when you get transformed. If you if you're saying, well, I'm doing that, are you really? Because if you're giving him, you know, a, a 15 or 20 minute prayer, you're going to have 15 or 20 minutes worth of power. If you're giving him 15 or 20 minutes worth of fasting, you're going to have 15 or 20 minutes worth of authority. Come you know, on. what you give into him is what he wants to give you. And what does he say that he wants to give you? He wants to give you all. He wants to give you all. And Jesus said, you will do greater things than I have done. Come That's on. Why does he, why was Jesus so great in the kingdom? Because he spent so much time with father. He okay. had the option to go run through fields and run down here and do all this. He could walk on water and do whatever he wanted. But instead, he said, no, I want to spend time with my father. And this is the thing. If we spend time with our father, he wants to do what? He said, I will reward you openly what you do privately. So this is where, this is where you build up. You build up through this. You build up through that. And again, I've been, I've been in the service of God for 25 years, but it's been like the last five years has been wow. transformation for me. So it's, it's really learning this way, getting into him and serving him because Jesus, Jesus is 
is a minister. Okay, and he mm -hmm. says the same thing about us. We're supposed to minister unto the Lord. Come How on, can man. you minister unto unto God? He doesn't need anything from us, but it's our mindset of what minister means. Minister is a servant. If you're willing to be a servant, Jesus says the greatest of you has to be able to wash people's feet in the kingdom. We're mm -hmm. trying to build ourselves up to, to get a title or to to uh, oh. to get to be this great man or woman where we're really supposed to become the lowest. We're supposed to be able to be the servant. And that is who is great in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. I think I love that thing that you said. Ed. Uh, go make disciples. Yes, People sir. People are Don't busy making friends. People are too busy yes. making friends. People are too busy making friends. People are too busy carrying people with them. I'm telling you, you cannot carry your own burden. That's why you need Jesus. How you are Amen. carrying other people's burdens. Like, come on. It's, 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 it's a time to think twice and thrice. Because I, I believe as a man of God, strongly I believe, I don't have best friends, to be honest. Like, I don't have best friends that I share all the problems of mine. I have best friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Because you Amen. cannot go to a human and tell your problem and human has his all 150 problems to look for. Right. You know? And then yes, he has sir. to look for another 200 problems of your. You're burdening your friend. And if he really cares for your friend, you need to tell the problem to the one who can solve it and bring your friend, drag your friend to Jesus Christ. Amen. Who can solve the problems too. So Amen. instead right. of having a drinking time with your friend and say like, let's release the burden for one hour. Go and have a prayer time with your friend. Amen. Go and have a fasting time with your friend. Go and have right. a Bible reading time with your friend. The Bible says, yes. ask of me and yes. I will give you the nations. So, Amen. which means the Bible has a power to give something. The word of God is a living word of God. So, I love that thing that you brought. If we are too busy making a friend and we are forgetting to make disciples, you know. Amen. And that's what happens with many, many, many things collapse in our lives. It's just because we are busy of shifting uh, the worldly things uh, in a better way. Worldly sure. things can never get into better way unless you get yourself better with the word of God. Fix yes, yourself sir. before the world comes and fix you. So if the world mm -hmm. fix you, you're going to have a tough time in life. So I think it's a great encouragement for people who are going through some addictions right now. That is time to uh, stand up. It's time to uh, say, God is with me. God is with my family. You know, I, I, I must say that when 2020 came, the pandemic came, coronavirus. I must say that me and my family, we were so much uh, up to what God is going to do. How God is want to use us this time. We were not panicking. Like literally, I didn't have food for, for days in Corona wow. times. I was like, that time I was single and, you know, I right. like nobody's, to, I don't know how to cook. And as I got the wife, I know how to cook. Like, come on, man. Like her entire <laughs> life. I, and I don't know how to cook. So right. this is something, uh, what do you call that? Uh, but we didn't give up. We didn't yes. give up on this Corona time in lockdown. Time. Amen. We didn't blame God. We didn't say complain to God. What are you doing? Where are you? You know, but we stand on the firm foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we were able to bless 100,000 people in Pakistan, hundreds of thousands of people in Philippines. We were, we were trying to be a channel of blessing. So in, in life, there is upside down. As you did that one, that was a very nice step. You made it. Every uh, life has an upside down. But life with Jesus Christ can also have finishing of upside down can also Amen. bring the hope in those upside down. So as men of God, um, as he stands strong alone and uh, watch, he, the Bible says, you know, what you lose uh, for kingdom, you gain in the kingdom, from the kingdom, you know? Yes, so if you are losing in the world, you lose it forever. You know, right. you become more emotional, more sad and more, but gains, uh, losing something for kingdom you gain from and gain in the kingdom, it's much beneficial. So Amen. let's focus. If you know the Bible, if you know Jesus Christ, then let's go and bring Jesus to people. I think it's not a job of pastors and um, and ministers of God only, women of God only. It's a job of every single believer to bring Jesus to somebody that you know is in need of Jesus Christ. So I think it's time mm -hmm. uh, to do something um, for the kingdom. Uh, don't just sit around and look what is going to happen. And I like, uh, 
I like your background very much at the back. The Lion of Judah, yeah. Lion of Judah. It is such a such an amazing, uh, such an amazing background. Uh, you have. Uh, you want to show something else? Oh yeah. Oh no. I, I, this this is just one of the. We just when you're getting into your prayer closet, you know, we we use this to. You just put it over your head, you know, because that's what you know when you're looking to to get rid of your excuses of. Well, you know, there's people around me or whatever. God tells you to get in your prayer closet. He's not talking about going into a little room. He's talking about putting just putting a Come cloth on. over your head, you know, and, and, and getting alone with him in your prayer closet and uh, taking that time because that's all that he wants. And he says that if you ask me, you know, and you ask anything in my son's name, I will give it to you. The, the thing that he wants more is for you to ask for is more of him. So if you're asking for more of him, if you're saying, you know, I've been um, I've been in church for 15 years, or I've been in ministry for this long, and nothing's happening. Press into him and keep pressing into him, because he says that he wants to bring you from glory to glory. So if you're spending time with him, if you're spending, you know, it, it doesn't have to necessarily just be a prayer shawl, you know, because like I said, if you have a blanket or if you have, you know, whatever, he he wants you to get into his presence, and if Come you on. take that time in his presence when when you're at work or at church and you're let's say you're doing the worst thing you're cleaning toilets it can be a glorious thing i'm telling you it happened to me i'm, I'm, I'm scraping gum off of floors and i was singing praises unto god Come and on. i was i was just transform I, I said no i'm gonna live every moment for him you know and god just give me give me a time to be able to talk uh to, to someone to your people and all of a sudden doubt contacted me out of nowhere and it wasn't like, you no, know, I wasn't like fishing, like, hey, you know, I want to be, he, he contacted me. And, okay. and, and I was just like, oh, wow. And why? Because God put me into his mind. God said, yeah. God told me to call you. And I was like, okay. And then yeah. he says, let's say, and man, we had conversations for hours. Why? Because I was on fire and hungry for God. He is on yeah. fire and hungry for God. And it's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same Jesus. It's the same God around the entire world. We need to stop getting off the fact of I'm not brown or I'm not black or I'm not oriental or I'm not this. We need to know that there's one heaven. There's one king. There's Amen. one savior. Well, he's older than me and he has a little gray in his beard. Well, he's younger than me and he has a... We need to get over that. There's no older God and younger God. It's Come the on. same for everyone. And whether you're rich, Amen. whether you're poor, whether you're this, whether you're that, Jesus will give you the love for everyone. If you Amen. will lay down your life for him, that's what he wants. And he will give you the words to speak to anyone. Because he says what? You overcome by the word of your testimony mm. along with Jesus' blood. The blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony is how we overcome. And he wants to be more than overcomer with you. Wow. Amen. Amen. I want to I bring that thing, as you mentioned, about the uh, shawl or blanket. Those people who, uh, who made an excuse. I live in a joint family. Pastor, they cannot pray. That's right. here is the answer. Here is the answer right. for it. You know, you just need something to get unfocused from other things and just yes. remain. And I think it's very common in the joint families. People do that with the fun young people and even everybody. You know, when they want to just concentrate on drama series or anything, they put it or blanket on and they watch it the entire time just focusly. So you can do it for the prayer also. Amen. Yes, God sir. bless Amen. you. That was amazing. Amen. That was a Amen. very, very, very prophetically came. I think uh, that was amazing. Oh, so let's go with the prayer questions. And um, we have several prayer questions right now. And uh, somebody says, thank you, Lord, for everything. Uh, and then there is a prayer request from the Philippines says, uh, pray for my family. And uh, yes, go for it. All righty. Father God, we just thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, I thank you, God. Your word says that uh, we have not because we ask not. So right now, Father God, I just ask you for the power and the authority to be able to speak into this man's life. Uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command uh, the heavens to be open for you, for your blessings, that you would not just have uh, visions for God's kingdom, but the provisions uh, for it, that you would not just have health, but you would have supernatural health. And God's word says that Jesus is the bread and that the children's bread, that is us, the believer, 
The children's bread is healing. So any healing that needs to take place in your life, uh, in, in, whether it be your children, whether it be yourself, whether it be other family members, that they would be healed right now in the name of Jesus, not for any other reason, but for the glory of God the Father. Right now, we speak to healing inside of those bodies, that, that, that from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, that it would come in alignment with the word, which says that you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, there is another prayer request we have. Uh, uh, pray for uh, the good health for my beloved ones. And then we have, can we have two, three prayer questions so we can pray for all the prayer questions? Uh, because there's a couple of them, so I might get uh, lost in that. Okay, so there is uh, another prayer request we have. Uh, uh, I think there was a, I think, pray, please pray for my youngest daughter. She's sick right now. So pray for youngest daughter and pray for everyone, uh, everyone good health. Yeah. All right. Father God, we're praying right now. Uh, again, we, we thank you so much that you love the children. You said, um, forsake the children not to come unto me. So right now, as much as this person loves their daughter, you love them more. Uh, as much as as much as we think that we would want them healed, you want them healed more, that we believe this. And we call it done in Jesus' name. I speak directly to this daughter, and I say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the power and the authority of Jesus' name. I command you to be healed right now from this moment forward. Because the word says that when the word goes out, it will not return void, but it will accomplish that which it was sent to do. Be healed in Jesus' name. Any and all sickness be gone. Be dried up at the root. I command you to not touch this girl anymore. He, uh, pain be gone. Healing come in in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And uh, anyone that is feeling uh, not adequate, not worthy enough, not holy enough, that is all untrue and it is lies from the devil because Jesus says, you are my beloved. You are holy. You are righteous because I am righteous. You are in me. You are hidden in me. The word of God tells you that you are worthy. You are holy. You are righteous because you are in me. That all the things would fall off of you that are lies. All of the things will fall off of you that is not true. That, that you would feel that you are the son or daughter of the king, of the most high, of the true and only God of this universe. That you would know that he is the one who fights for you. He is the one who provides for you. He is the one who does this. So if you're feeling that you can't make things happen, I, I, I was out of work. For, for almost a year and God paid all my bills. I was, I was in a place where, where, uh, where I was having knee surgery. And yet every time I would go into the presence of the Lord, I was jumping on that hurt knee. I was to be able to jump on one leg in the presence of God every time that I got there. And I know Jesus right now that you said where two or more are gathered in your name, there you were in the midst. This is the presence of God right now around you, in you, and, and, and for you. And he wants you to know that he is here healing you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, hmm. There is another progress, Pastor. Please pray for my protection, good health, and more blessing for my family. And my loved ones. Yes. Amen. All right. The the, the word of God. When when we ask for protection, it, it, there's there's a twofold way to ask for this. Uh, Jesus, I just ask you for the hedge of protection to be around them, which is when they come into your word and when they lift up the name of Jesus. When that when they lift up the name of God, this is how we run into the strong tower. That we would just focus on that. If we're focusing on our problems, then that is what is is our new God. If we're, if we're focusing on our addictions, that becomes our God. If we're focusing on what we're failing at, that becomes our God. Instead, focus on the word of God. Focus on praying and praising him and the things that he has done for you before, the things that he has done for people around you, the things that he has done. And I praise you, God, for for, for removing asthma from me, for removing migraines from me, for removing uh, addictions from me, Father God, for removing these things, and that you want to do it for all people right now, in the name of Jesus, that you would remove these things, that you would remove the, the, the problems and bring in the blessings as these get removed, that we wouldn't remain an empty shell for more demonic attacks to just run in sevenfold. Instead, we were 
press into you, Father God, that you would fill us up, that there would be no room for demonic activities, that it would become our shield of faith that you said quenches every fiery dart of the enemy, that we would have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and we already talked about the shield but most importantly now we can go on the offensive by reading the word of god the word it says the sword of the spirit which is the word of god that we would be able to partake in that every day and know that we are doing this because it is mighty for the pulling down of strongholds that we would believe this and press forward in your kingdom fighting for your word god fighting for more of your presence and that you would just pour out wisdom knowledge dreams visions onto these people because you said in the end days that that the young men would dream dreams and the old men would have the, the prophecies father god that they would be able to the, the sons and daughters would prophesy your young men would dream dreams that they would be able to be knowing that this is the end times this is the time that we would have this and they would be able to receive from you as people follow me signs and wonders follow after them that they would know this receive this and walk in it in Jesus' name. Blessings on their household, on their families. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. There is somebody says, pray for my financial need. I have, uh, I had a lot of debts. Yes. Amen. Okay, again, uh, Jesus is our provider. He is the one who, who calls forth things for us. He's the one that sees us. He counts the numbers of hairs on our head. So he definitely counts the no, the, the, what's in your bank account as well. And he will be able to multiply that for you because he is your provider. Trust that he will make a way. Don't try to do it in and of yourself. Pray to him for his way. Ask him what he wants done. But Jesus, right now, that's exactly what we're asking for this person right now, that your word says that you would give us the power to create wealth, that whatever it is, if it's them starting a business, if it's them uh, walking down the street, finding it the same way that you told Peter to go down, put his hook in the water, and he pulls out a fish. Inside the fish was a coin. Inside the fish was money. So you you show us that, that it is you who supernaturally takes care of us. Uh, I, I was out of food in my house i didn't have a stitch of food and i sat down and i thanked god for him providing for me when i had nothing i still had faith he says it's impossible to please me without faith if you have faith then he can open doors for you and i sat there and prayed when i had nothing and thanked him and it with my family we bowed our heads we believed and all of a sudden a knock came at the door and next door was an entire house filled with six months of groceries. So God has the ability to provide for you supernaturally. And I'm believing for those supernatural uh, uh, things to start taking place, debts to fall off of you, things that have come. They believe this as your year of Jubilee. Because Jesus says, when you believe in that, when you press into resting in me, I will remove the debts from you. I will remove the things that have been eaten by the worm, the canker worm. In Jesus' name, we believe this to be broken off of you and for, for true supernatural uh, uh, rain from heaven to just pour upon you the, the rain of the 30, the 60, and the hundredfold blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, there is, a, I think there is a guy who has an exam going on. Pray, please pray for my exam this Sunday. Uh, Father, we pray for the exam of this man right now, Father. We pray for the exam right now. We speak the uh, victory uh, for this Vic exam. We speak the good news uh, yes. to him in the name of Jesus. And Father, whatever he has learned and revised, Lord, it will be helpful to him on that spot, on those moments, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There is Amen. one more prayer request. There's a lot of them, but uh, we, let's go with the journal uh, prayer request now. Just pray for everybody. And uh, mainly people as of uh, there is one prayer request is please pray for my safety and good health for my family members. So have a journal prayer request for everybody like pray for and then we close for it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for uh, God stands TV. I ask you for anyone that comes into this part of the ministry, whether they're watching, whether they're a cameraman, whether they are uh, helping to uh to edit whatever it is, anyone that is touching this God Stands TV message right now would be in this one mind and one accord, would be where there are two or three gathered in your name, that this would be the midst, Father God. You said the kingdom of heaven is 
in our hands is at hand right now. So we, we ask you for that blessing, God, upon us, that we would be able to stop searching for your hands of blessing, start searching for your heart in the way that it makes me feel, but start searching for your face, that we would truthfully search for your face, Father God. And you said, anyone that sees your face would die, that we would start to be able to pray God, help me to die to myself. Help me to die to my past. Help me to die to the things that were of old. Help me to die to my lukewarmness. Help me to press into you as never before and to seek your face and to die to myself, to not worry about what I'm going to watch next on, on, on my phone or what I'm going to play with next on this or who I'm going to have like my friend request. Instead, help me to think about what you like, what mm. you need, what you want, and change me, God, from, the, from, from everything that I used to be to everything that I know that I need to be in you daily pressing into your word and into your kingdom father God I ask you for blessings peace and mercy upon the people in Pakistan upon the people in the Philippines upon the people in America upon the people God in Europe that everywhere that 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 our feet touches would be claimed for the kingdom of God that we would stop talking about the things that have been attacking us from coronavirus to this to that and we would start to proclaim the glories of I made it through the coronavirus I've made it through the pandemic of, 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 of people having abortions I've made it through these pandemics of evil because you said you are with me. I shall fear no evil for thou art with me, that we would be able to see that it is the light that attacks the darkness, not the other way around. In Jesus' name, we would be the children of the light, bringing forth your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. In the strongest son of God. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, man of God. Thank you so much. And if you do have any testimony, guys, make sure you drop your testimony. And it's going to be amazing. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your thank time. You. And, thank um, you. And it, uh, 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 let me say to everybody, this man, I have a, I have a huge respect on the anointing of this man. So um, keep us in your prayers also. And uh, we, are, we are praying for you. We, we are keeping you in our prayers. And it was a lovely time. Let's have some more uh, broadcast together sometime soon. And let's do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus Any last name. one or two words you want to give to the people? I, I, like I said, if you don't have a Bible, you know, get a Bible, you know, and, and, and start yeah. reading it daily. This is the only way that you can be, have anything that's worthy to give to somebody else. Because he Come says, on. as you freely receive, freely give. So get, get a word, get, get a Bible one way or another and, and, and truthfully get into that Bible and it will transform you. Amen. Amen. Thank you yeah. so much. God bless Thank you. Thank you. God uh, bless you. God. See you soon. Thanks, God.